Lords, ladies and gentlemen, because we've got a couple of lords here, so I don't, don't want to upset anyone. Um, I want to thank you all for being here to start with, to celebrate the achievements of Teddy Baldock, my, my granddad. No doubt, a lot of you, a lot of people here will have never heard that name. However, back in 1927, he was the hero of British sport when he beat the American Archie Bell at the Albert Hall on the 5th of May 1927 for the vacant World Bantamweight Championship. And in the, when he won the title, he was only 19 years old, so he remains Britain's youngest ever world boxing champion. <laughs> Tragically, when he passed away, there was only a handful, handful of people attending his funeral. He was a forgotten, forgotten champion, a forgotten sportsman. So all I can say is, is to have all these people, all of you turn up, is a fitting tribute to, to my grandfather. I'm sure if he's looking down, he'll be proud. Just to let you know, especially if you live or you're from Poplar, is Teddy Baldock lived in number 32 Byron Street, which is literally a few hundred metres behind us. All right? And he attended uh, Langdon, well, it wasn't the Langdon Park Community College then, but it was the uh, Hay Curry School. So he attended the school, which we can see behind us, and he lived only a few hundred metres away. He was immensely proud of Poplar, and he once said in an interview, Poplar's what made him, what made him the man he was. So anyway, I'd now like to introduce my mum, Teddy Baldock's only daughter. <coughs> who will be updating the statue. And along with Colin Wellard. Colin works, or a member of uh, Poplar Harker, and without them, this day wouldn't have happened. It's been a partnership between me and Pop, uh, between myself and Poplar Harker, so thanks very much, Colin. Just to finish off before we actually do the unveiling, when Teddy fought, he was known as the Pride of Poplar. Well, he's back here now, and, I'm hope that, and I hope that the people of Poplar can be proud of him again. So, Colin, yeah. come on. First time I've done this, hopefully it'll go smoothly. Okay, 
I'm sitting in front, I'm sitting sober. Yeah, I'm not even. My dad liked me, and my dad sparred with him. And when he went to America, I sat in front with him. And it was the best holiday my dad ever had. And that was his last holiday. I was going to start this speech by the uh, usual Rory routine of, uh, for those of you that don't know me, but I think most people say they do. Um, I thought I'd start this by really giving you an intro as to why we're all here today. And, um, obviously, I never met my granddad. I was, I was two years old when he died. Um, the first time I knew of him was when I was 14 years old and my mum pulled out an old scrapbook and, uh, that she'd got from her mum's house, which had been place out. So I already had, had an interest in boxing. And to find out that your uh, grandfather was the world bantamweight champion was quite something for me. So I sort of spent many years going up and down to the Collendale newspaper library, looking at, just researching anything I could find that on my grandfather. Um, the research that I did culminated in a book and myself and the author Brian Bell wrote uh, together. We had it published in uh, 2008 um, with uh, Pennant Publishing, Cass Pennant. I know Cass is here today, so thanks very much, Cass. After the book, or after the success of the book, I thought there should be something to mark uh, my, my grandfather's achievements because when he got uh, his funeral down in South End, there's nothing there to mark his resting place. There's nothing to remember Teddy Baldock by. So I originally thought of a blue plaque, but unfortunately, to meet the criteria of a blue plaque, the house isn't there in Byron Street anymore, so we had to scrub around that. And uh, I thought, why not go for a statue? Um, I was then introduced to the sculptor Carl Payne at a boxing dinner. And obviously I'd known, I'd seen his work, he's responsible for the Randall Turpin statue in Warwick, so I knew that I had someone there that would do an absolutely fantastic job. Where is Carl? Carl here? Carl, do you want to just step up here? I'm not going to ask you to say, say anything, but I think everyone here, if they see the statue, to say anything, but I just wanted you all to know that this is the man that has done such a fantastic job on a statue that's, that's now stood out there. Obviously, anyone else here that wants to uh, get a statue done of their grandfather, <laughs> go and see Carl, and he'll get it, get it sorted. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> Luckily, managed to raise the money and the statues out there. Now, when I was raising the money, I thought I need to make something official because when people don't know me and they have put money forward for you know, cake sales, we do the marathon, things like that, it could be Mark Sachs does a run into Spain fund, right? So I wanted to make it official. So I started the Teddy Bollock Sports Benevolent Fund. Now, now that the statue's up, that fund's going to stick, keep going. So all the money that you've put to your raffle tickets and buying the programs, that's going into the charity. And that charity's been started to help people that have been uh, injured in sport. I'm not saying that if something like that had been around when my granddad was, uh, you know, suffering from hard times, it would have helped him out. But it's a charity we've started. We've already been able to help uh, a boxer called John Joe Finnegan, who. Uh, Tragically suffered a bleed on the brain, fight for the southern area super middleweight title, and uh, we're able to help him out initially. So now the statue's up, it's not finished. You know, we're raising money for people. It won't just be boxing. You know, you've got rugby players that are injured, all other sports. And it's only a, it's just a small thing, but hopefully the Teddy Bowl Art Sports Benevolent Fund will help them, and that's where your money's gone towards for this uh, for this raffle. Just in summary, because we've been up here long enough. 
I hope that Poplar's going to be proud of the statue, just as, you know, my grandfather was, was proud of Poplar. And they can be proud of their sport and heritage as well, you know, you've got the, the old heritage, the statue outside, and now you've got this beautiful £4 million youth centre, you know. So let, we've put Poplar back on the map now. Um, and I just hope it will serve as an inspiration for the pupils, showing them that a local that only lived 100 yards away, through hard work, determination, rode to the very pinnacle of his chosen sporting career. All right. So let, let's hope it, it will, you know, give the kids an inspiration.